It's coming from UP Los Baños. Our moderator in UPLD is Professor Ruena Bakumpis. UPLD, please come in. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> yes, UPLD. Okay. So, so the, the weaknesses of basic and secondary education feeds into higher education. Given that premise, how can state colleges and universities best respond to the challenges faced by basic and secondary education, given that tertiary education are also facing its own challenges? Challenge, there, there are a lot of challenges. I'm not clear what, what Rowena means by, by, by challenges, but certainly I think the, the minimum proposal we have is that we want all the levels to be in sync with one another. That's the minimum. That we at our end in higher ed are not expecting competencies that basic ed is not even thinking about. I mean, we've got to converse with one another and say it's clear from start to finish, this is what we want the kids to learn. And then we leave each one to devise the best way to do that because we don't know how to deal with grade one or grade two. Yeah? So that's, that's the very, very minimum. We don't want this segmented kind of, 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 of structure and we, we certainly don't like this one size fits all kinds of, kind of thing. Second is in the matter of curriculum. Earlier on there was a, 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 a comment about uh, when Dina was saying that certain disciplines have their own methods of, that, that even children can learn and this is very true in history. This is my own advocacy apart from my work. And I, I think that, that higher ed has a, place, uh, a, a role to play here as, as well. Of course, the bottom line is that we spell out a clear reform agenda for higher ed. I read the literature. There are medium-term development plans. There are different sorts of, of documents. But many of the challenges that I tried to outline earlier, especially globally, that affect us are not yet quite in the picture. And, and, and this is already taking place and it will happen more. So I think that's the most immediate for higher ed, to really sit down, get the groups together, start talking, maybe go through the, how long did it take Besra? Three years of consultation? No, all layers of, 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 of consultations, three, yeah? Maybe we can do it faster, but we have to go through, through that process. And it's, it's got to be not just public, HEIs, private as well, all kinds. And then we can, you know, it's something from the ground that, that we, can, we can decide. To me, that's the most fundamental. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Jokno. We will now entertain the next question from UP Visayas in Tacloban. Moderator is Professor Melodina Fabilio. Tacloban, please come in. Yes, good afternoon. We have a question from Professor Dolores Alcobar, Visayas State University faculty. Good afternoon. Thank you for giving us additional insights about BISRA. I hope this concern. It seems that BISRA has not changed so much the culture of most of the deaf ed officials. Does BIPID conduct monitoring and evaluation on the effects of BISRA to the deep aid, deep aid stakeholders, particularly the applicant for teaching position, volunteer and new teachers, and implementation of new initiatives like the experiential learning course. I will read it. Uh, okay, okay. It seems that BESRA has not changed the culture of the deaf ed officials. Does DepEd conduct monitoring and evaluation on the effect of BESRA to the DepEd stakeholders, particularly the applicants for teaching positions, new volunteer teachers, and implementation of new initiatives like experiential learning courses? Maybe, maybe for the officials. Well, it's not easy to actually generalize that way because officials on the ground, divisions and regional directors, they, a number of them have really changed their culture. 
Imagine, imagine the regional director and the division superintendent who used to be very powerful. School-based management is really something that they, they re, re actually adjusted to. And very difficult to give up your power. I mean, even just letting the MOE drill. Imagine ourselves. I mean, imagine a dean or even a chair of a department. A dean has certain prerogatives that will be given up in effect. That's what, that's what happened with Besra. But they have changed the way of doing things. And uh, maybe the precursors of BESRA, the projects that are foreign assisted, have changed cultures as well without changing people. And I think, I think one of the important, for me, the reason why I'm impressed with, um, with this program where you put an entire package in, is that corporate culture has seeped into the culture of DepEd through these foreign assisted projects and hopefully through BESRA. What does that mean? If you have uh, quarterly work and financial plans and you're a superintendent and you get together and you're supposed to be on your toes because you are supposed to talk about what you've been doing, then that's already changing the usual culture where you don't have to account to each other for, for your plans. But it's going to be very slow because that maybe BESRA has not really fully taken off. The whole idea is maybe when BESRA begins to focus in phases and it begins to take off and it actually has concerted efforts per geographic areas and you reach all the schools, the culture will just necessarily change with it. But it's not something that you will just say from the top, you have to change the culture. It has to be the doing that will make people get into it. Thank you. We have time, unfortunately, just for one last question from the audience here in Kiliman. Yes, sir. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you for all the talks. I learned a lot this afternoon. Just want to ask about the uh, uh, the two-year gap, no? Uh, actually, if I may clarify a little bit, in the case of engineering, it's more like a one-year gap because it's uh, in our case it's six plus four plus five. In other countries, it's six plus six plus four, no? Sixteen versus fifteen. And I think maybe in some other programs. Uh, the gap is actually one year rather than two years. So my question is, uh, if you guys have actually identified where that uh, gap is, uh, because the, this problem has been kicked around a lot, but uh, nobody seems to have the answer where the gap is. Some people say add preschool. Some people say add grade seven. Some say add one more year to high school. Some even say add after you know the, the the terminal courses in college, so where should we really you know put in that uh, missing missing year? Uh, so I just want to ask if uh, anybody has actually studied this and uh, we know where the gap is. Well, the, the chair has a technical had I don't know now with the technical panels on this um, parang two-year pre-university. I think the, it was a compromise. I mean, I know it because I, I sit on the panel and um, I, I, was, I said this should really be in basic ed. It, it shouldn't be in, univer in, in higher, no? And um, I think be, we were yes, made to understand that you mga private schools, lalo na, are opposing it. Kasi darating, da, may makakaroon ng mga taon na walang, walang enrollment. Magdadagdag ka dito, magdadagdag ka doon. So, ang, ang plano, I think one plan was to put, it make it like a two-year pre-university. But, wala naman mangyayari yan. I, I, I don't know if I should say it. It's a program of, of this government now, and there's a new government coming in, so that can change. Uh, we, th that was, I think, an attempt by Chair to compromise. We don't want to compromise. We were thinking we want it in grade 7 and then f fifth year high school. So it'll be like K to 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, right? 1 to 12. Uh, 1 to 10, right? 12, yeah. Yeah. That's what we want. Thank you, Mari.